Good morning, everyone. And uh, the talk is about mainly about the Spanish Revolution in 1931-37. But uh, I will also try to explain uh, the implications of that revolution for the situation today in Spain. As you know, uh, a very turbulent situation has opened in Spain since the beginning of the economic crisis in 2007-2008. But particularly after 2011, with the beginning of the Indignados movement, the movement of the enraged, where hundreds of thousands of young people and not so young people took to the streets, occupied the squares, and basically challenged a system which has been in place in Spain since 1978, when uh, the fall of the Franco dictatorship. And the Franco dictatorship is obviously the result of the defeat of the Spanish Revolution in 31-37. So a lot of discussions have taken place about the Spanish uh, Revolution, its meaning, uh, the legacy of the dictatorship, and so on. And for instance, the recovery of what is called uh, historical memory, i.e. the truth of what happened under Franco, the truth of what happened in the Spanish Civil War, is a big part of uh, arming the revolutionary movement uh, today, and it's something uh, in, in which many young people take a strong uh, interest uh, now. And it's something that has been really blocked from Spanish official uh, history <coughs> for the best part of the last 35 uh, years. Uh, the official history taught in schools is basically that uh, there was a civil war, which is a very bad thing, a uh, war between uh, fra <coughs> fratricidal war, Spanish killing Spanish people, and uh, uh, that's uh, that's one uh, one of the official versions. The other official version is that there was a democratic republic, which was overthrown by a fascist uh, coup, which also doesn't tell you uh, what really happened, which is a revolutionary movement, Re a, a real revolution in which the workers uh, took power for a few uh, months. <clears throat> and this is completely blacked out from the official history. You will never know about uh, that. In the same way, the revolutionary struggle of uh, Spanish workers and youth in the 1970s to overthrow the Franco dictatorship is also erased from official memory. And what you are told, <coughs> sorry, what you are told is that basically there was an agreement of all democratic forces and Franco regime was dismantled and, and that was it. Uh, so that's why it's important to uh, study the Spanish uh, Revolution. Leon Trotsky said that the Spanish workers in the 1930s could have won not one, but uh, ten victories. And uh, that the proletarian content of the Spanish Revolution was perhaps ten times stronger than that of the Russian uh, Revolution, which had happened 30 years uh, earlier. At the beginning of uh, last century, in the 1910s, 1920s, Spain was a very backward uh, country, one of the most backward countries in uh, Europe, uh, a country which, uh, in which the bourgeois democratic revolution had not been uh, carried out in any significant uh, way. Uh, you know, obviously, and this was... Um, in a distorted way, the result of the imperial past of uh, Spain. Uh, the Spanish uh, crown conquered uh, America and expoliated uh, the American continent. But this was a feudal uh, monarchy, a very backward uh, system, which meant that most, uh, the, the big majority of the money that was looted from the American continent did not go to the development of capitalism in Spain, but rather filtered through other more advanced uh, nations in uh, Europe and uh, helped the development of capitalism in, uh, more in other countries, in England, in uh, Holland, and, uh, and so on. And Spain remained uh, backward and never really developed. Throughout most of the 19th century, there were attempts at bourgeois revolutions, uh, which were very soon suppressed by military coups and uh, periods of reaction. And uh, there was never real uh, development. In 1930, Trotsky wrote a very interesting uh, article called The Spanish uh, Revolution, uh, in which he set out the main tasks of the Spanish uh, Revolution. And most of them were the tasks of the bourgeois democratic uh, revolution. One was the question of the land, the agrarian uh, reform. In Spain, still, uh, the, the big majority of the land, particularly in the south uh, of the country, was owned by absentee landlords. And 
uh, up to one million uh, landless laborers worked in these uh, lands for very little uh, money and they were unemployed between 90 to 150 days every year. There was a situation of extreme uh, poverty in, uh, in Andalusia, in Extremadura, in Galicia, in other rural uh, areas. But the problem at this time was that uh, these landlords had become completely linked and united with the capitalist uh, class. Many bourgeois had interests in the land, the, landed, uh, the landowners had the money in the banks, the banks had interest in the land, and so it became a reactionary bloc, a united reactionary bloc that prevented the development of, uh, of the country. The second problem of the Spanish Revolution was the question of the church. And this was not just a question of uh, religion, it was also a question of power, money and wealth, and particularly land. It is calculated that the Spanish uh, church owned one-third of the land uh, in, in 1930, and it also owned about one-third of all the wealth in all the private wealth in the country. So it was a powerful uh, institution which prevented any development of, uh, of progressive uh, ideas, uh, any development of the, of, the, um, of the agrarian revolution and so on, and had a very strong hold on uh, the minds of millions of people who lived in, uh, in the countryside. Uh, the other question was the question of the army. The army in Spain was completely, uh, it was a massive uh, army, completely out of proportion with the needs of the, of the country, with a very big uh, officer caste. Uh, the sons of the ruling class will be sent one to inherit the business, the second one to the church, and the third one to the army. So, so uh, probably the most uh, uh, most of these officers were just uh, had a job, but they had no uh, military inclination, they had no knowledge, and they were very uh, uh, backward and uh, ignorant. This was shown, for instance, in the Spanish adventure in uh, Morocco, which ended in a massive defeat for the Spanish uh, army, uh, and a victory for the forces of uh, the Moroccan uh, uh, nationalists in 1920. But this question of the army had been simmering uh, through the 1910s, the 1920s. In 1909, there was a one-week-long general strike and uprising in Barcelona, called the Tragic Week, which was uh, an uprising of the workers against the conscription of uh, the sons of the working class to fight in the Moroccan uh, war, uh, showing also a high degree of internationalist uh, spirit. But th this was a, a constant uh, question. Forgot to say that in, uh, because of the role of the army, in so uh, the role of the church in society, uh, every single revolutionary uprising in Spain was accompanied with the burning of churches. And this is a very good uh, and old, uh, very well-established tradition in Spain. And in 1909 there was burning of churches, in 1919 there was burning of churches. And in 1931, uh, when the Republic was proclaimed, there was also burning of, uh, of uh, churches. There was a, also a strong anti-clerical tradition in the Spanish uh, working class particularly amongst the, uh, the, uh, the anarchists. Um, the fourth problem of the Spanish Revolution was the question of uh, the national and colonial uh, question. Spain had lost uh, most of its uh, remaining colonies in uh, 1898, Cuba and the Philippines, but it still remained a colonial power in uh, Morocco. And this was a constant source of uh, reactionary ideas and uh, as we will see later, the fascist uprising started with those troops that were stationed in uh, Morocco, and Franco was the main commander of the Moroccan uh, troops. Um, at the same time, there was the national question. The Basque country and Catalonia had been fighting for some degree of uh, autonomy or self-rule for many uh, years, and the backward Spanish ruling class had never managed to unify the country on a progressive basis, on a basis that will be progressive for all the peoples that were part of the, of the Spanish state at that uh, time. And this had given rise to a lot of uh, uh, centrifugal tendencies, nationalist tendencies in Catalonia and the Basque Country uh, mainly. 
Uh, and this had always been uh, repressed by the Spanish uh, ruling class in a very uh, ruthless uh, way. So this, these were the, the main tasks of the Spanish Revolution at that time. But at the same time, time Trotsky pointed out that uh, Spain at that time already had a very strong proletariat concentrated mainly in uh, Barcelona and in Catalonia which uh, amounted to about 50% of all uh, workers were in this uh, region. And then in um, strong pockets of industrial uh, working class concentration in Madrid and in Vizcaya, in the mines in uh, Asturias, and then a large uh, section of rural proletariat in the, in the south. And therefore, Trotsky explained that in order to carry out the tasks of the National Democratic Revolution, the, the progressive section of the bourgeois could not be trusted because throughout history they, were, they had been more afraid of, the, of mobilizing the working class for fear of losing their own privileges than uh, afraid of the, of the old feudal regime, that, uh, the ancient regime that had to be uh, overthrown. And this was proven to be uh, correct, as we will see in a minute. Uh, the regime had uh, reached a very deep crisis uh, by the late 1920s and 1929 world crisis of capitalism was the last, uh, the last straw for Spanish uh, capitalism. Uh, we saw the overthrow of the dictatorship of Primo de Rivera and then a short period in which uh, Alfonso XII was the, the king. Uh, but by 1930, there was a widespread mobilization. There was an agreement between socialist and, re and left Republican uh, forces uh, to struggle for a republic. And in 1931, April 14th, uh, the left Republican socialist coalition won the municipal elections. These were not national uh, elections, but uh, they were considered as a test of the amount of support for the republic. Uh, people came out on the streets and the Republic was proclaimed on the 14th of April 1931. This was a very significant uh, event which opened the Spanish uh, Revolution. At that time there were a number of different uh, political forces in the country and it's important to see uh, which uh, policies they, each of them defended and what uh, specific weight they had, but the first thing to say is that uh, Alf uh, Alfonso XII had to flee the country. Republic was uh, proclaimed, and this was the, the opening shot of the Spanish uh, Revolution. The main political parties of the working class were the Socialist Party, uh, which was, uh, had been established in the late uh, 1800s. And one of the characteristics of this Spanish party is that uh, it never paid much attention to theory. Uh, uh, and so the, the party had gone through different uh, phases, but the phase that the party had gone through immediately before the proclamation of the Republic in 1931 was a very conservative phase. The Socialist Party uh, had accepted a position in the Primo de Rivera dictatorship, and the main leader of the party, Largo Caballero, which then became a very left-wing figure during the Spanish Revolution, had been an advisor to the Minister of Labour in, under, the Frank, under the Primo de Rivera dictatorship. And the Primo de Rivera dictatorship had played the UGT, which is the Socialist Trade Union, against the CNT, which was the Anarcho-Syndicalist uh, Trade Union. They established uh, compulsory arbitration so that there will be no strikes, and the UGT accepted this uh, wholesale. And Largo Caballero was the leader of the, of the UGT. Uh, at that time, the Socialist Party was divided in different uh, factions that developed through the Spanish Revolution. Uh, Largo Caballero became the leader of the left, and he became very left-wing. At one point, he was uh, known as the Spanish uh, Lenin, which he was not. But uh, he spoke in a very radical uh, language, and uh, as we will see later, in 1934, he was even talking about the dictatorship of the proletariat. Uh, the failure of uh, the bourgeois democracy and things like this. Prieto, on the other hand, was the leader of the right wing, more conciliatory uh, reformist wing of the, of the party. And, uh, but at that time, in 1931, there were all, the section, all the different wings of the party were united on this idea that a coalition with the left Republicans was uh, necessary. The left Republicans were led by a man called uh, Azaña, 
and they progressively lost support because as the revolution developed, the workers became more mobilized, more radical, they demanded uh, more, and the bourgeoisie became more and more afraid, and they progressively drew the conclusion that the only solution to the problems they were facing was a dicta an open dictatorship, which is what happened, what they attempted in 36. The Communist Party of Spain was a very small organization. In Spain, the, the Russian Revolution had had a massive impact. The, the main organizations of the Spanish workers had voted to adhere to the Third International. Not only the Socialist Party, which voted in its Congress to adhere, although it then reversed the decision, the Socialist Youth, which went on to form the original Communist Party uh, as a whole, uh, as uh, the whole organization went on to form the Communist Party, but also the CNT, the Anarcho-Syndicalist Trade Union, which organized uh, the most militant layers of the Spanish working class and was particularly strong in Barcelona and in Catalonia. Uh, and it had a revolutionary tradition. They voted in 1919 to join the Third International. And they sent delegates to the founding uh, Congress, although then when they came back, the decision was also reversed. But some of the early leaders of the Communist Party in Spain, like Andres Nin, Maurin and others, had been leaders of the, of the CNT. Um, so, but by 1930, the Communist Party was a very small organization. The reason for this was Stalinism. Uh, the party in Spain was never allowed to develop. Its leadership was purged once uh, and again. Every single mistake, and they made many big mistakes, was blamed on the old leadership. The new leadership was imposed from uh, Moscow, and there was never an organic development of the party because of all these uh, purges. In 1930-31, the, the party was following a very ultra-left uh, line. So uh, when the republic was proclaimed, there were enormous illusions on uh, the republic, but the line of the Communist Party was down with the Republic for, for the Soviets. Uh, at the time when the Republic had just been uh, proclaimed, they were very isolated, although they had pockets of support in uh, Seville uh, and so on, but they were very isolated, to the point where the Spanish Communist left uh, was now a bigger organization than the official uh, party. The official party had been reduced to maybe 500 or 800 uh, members. The Spanish Communist Left had been founded by Nin, Andreu Nin, who was, as I said, a for, former leader of the CNT, and he'd gone to uh, Russia to participate in the International Red Trade Union uh, Organization, uh, and he worked close, closely with uh, Trotsky. In 19, uh, and he became a supporter of the ideas of the left uh, opposition, of Trotsky's uh, left opposition. He came back to Spain, but from the very beginning, Trotsky was very critical of, uh, he, of him. Instead of trying to establish a strong uh, organization of the, of the left opposition, he spent quite a lot of time, time trying to convince other people, like Maurin, who was the leader of a Catalan uh, right communist uh, organization, i.e. supporter of uh, Buharin and the, and the right uh, communists, uh, because he was a personal friend of Maureen and he tried to convince him to have a joint newspaper or a joint magazine and this and that. He wasted a lot of time and if you look through the correspondence between Nin and Trotsky, you can see Trotsky's growing impatience at the fact that they were not organizing their party, they were not uh, organizing their forces to intervene in the movement, they were wasting a lot of uh, time. Uh, but finally an organization was uh, formed which had some, strong, some pockets of uh, support in uh, Extremadura and in other places. Uh, and the organization in 1931 must have had about a thousand uh, members, more or less. Uh, and it was the organization that had the, the most correct program in the Spanish uh, Revolution. They basically advocated that there should be no support for the, for the left Republicans and that the workers should have a policy of class independence, combining the struggle for democratic demands with a struggle for workers' power, that Soviets should be organized in one name or, or another, uh, i.e. workers' uh, committees in the localities, in the neighborhoods, in the factories, and, and so on. The CNT, as I said, was the largest organization of the Spanish uh, workers, and the most militant and radical uh, uh, of all of them. 
Uh, but they also were riddled with lots of uh, contradictions. There was a strong anti-political tendency within it, but at the same time, all the leaders of the CNT formed a political, what was in uh, effect a political party called the FAI, the anarchist, the Iberian Anarchist Federation, uh, to intervene in the CNT in an organized way to pursue an anarchist uh, line. So you see the contradiction. Uh, they were against politics. But they were, in fact, conducting uh, themselves as a political faction within the, within the CNT. And uh, the main leaders of the CNT were Durruti. Uh, I will talk about him a bit more later. Uh, Durruti and Ascaso, they, were, they, were, they belonged to the, let's call it, uh, the direct action wing of the CNT. They've been involved in, uh, in the 1920s and, uh, and earlier in a physical struggle against the bosses. The bosses in, in Barcelona set up what they called the Free Union, which in, in fact was a group of thugs, uh, which were breaking up strikes, killing workers, leaders, and there was a uh, number of uh, uh, gun battles in the streets of Barcelona between anarcho-syndicalist uh, activists and, and the bourgeois thugs. Um, interesting thing that he, he had to emigrate to uh, Latin America where he spent some time robbing banks in Argentina and uh, in Cuba and in other countries in Mexico uh, to fund uh, the cause. So you, you see the picture. He was very well uh, liked by the anarchist uh, masses because he was a man of action. That he, he, They could trust him to go until the end in defending their ideas, which were revolutionary uh, ideas. But he was not uh, a theoretician in that, in that way. Uh, on the other hand, people like uh, Oliver and Federica Monseigne, they were on the, most, uh, on the more conciliatory wing of the CNT. And very quickly, they came under the pressure of bourgeois public opinion. And, uh, and as we will see later, they entered the Republican uh, coalition government. And then there was another smaller formation, the Catalan Republican left, which was more or less the Catalan equivalent of the left Republicans. But in Catalonia, it had mass support among small uh, peasants. So it had certain popular support. And Trotsky pointed out that it was important for Marxists to differentiate between the reactionary character of the Catalan nationalism of the bourgeois and petty bourgeois and the progressive democratic character of the Catalan nationalism, of the working masses and the small peasants and, and so on. And that the only policy correct for Spanish uh, revolutionaries to adopt in relation to the national question was to defend the right of self-determination of uh, Catalonia. That only in this way, the unconditional defense of this right, they could win uh, over the trust and confidence of Catalan uh, workers. This is something that is still very, re very relevant uh, today in, in uh, Catalonia and in Spain. So basically this is the, the situation that we find ourselves in at the beginning of, uh, of 1931, April, when the Republic is uh, proclaimed. The problem was that uh, the workers and peasants of Spain had uh, a lot of hopes and expectations in this Republican government. This Republican government is completely unable to uh, fulfill any of the hopes and uh, aspirations, mainly because of the bloc uh, exercised by the left Republicans, which were really bourgeois organizations. For instance, in relation to land reform, the Republican uh, Socialist Coalition government proposed a plan for land reform, which will take about 100 years to complete. The peasants in Spain had not a uh, hundred years to wait for a genuine land reform, so they started taking over the land. And in many uh, towns and villages in Andalusia, the, the, the peasants occupied the land, divided it amongst themselves, and started uh, working the land. And what was the response of the Republican government? The response was to send a civil guard, which was the most hated uh, repressive force in Spain, that had been used in the countryside for many decades to attack the workers and, and so on, the landless peasants and so on. And there was a famous incident in 1932, I think, in Casas Viejas, where the local peasants occupied the town hall and uh, divided the land, occupied the, 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 the land of the, land, uh, the landowners. And uh, the civil guard was sent by the Republican Socialist government. 23 uh, peasants were killed and hundreds were injured. 
And, and there was no uh, official protest by the Socialist uh, Party in, in the government. They didn't resign from the government. There was no, no action. By, by the January 1932, most of the illusions the workers and peasants had in the Republican government had uh, dissipated. And there were a number of uprisings in uh, the end of January 1932 in a number of towns where impatient ultra-left elements within the CNT declared uh, libertarian communism in a number of towns. In Catalonia, for instance, there were two, two mining uh, villages where communism was declared, and they, uh, they ran the, whole, the workers ran the, the whole town for about a week until they were put down by the forces of repression sent by the Republican Socialist uh, government. So you can see how progressively uh, as a result of this also, the abstentionist wing of the CNT became stronger. They said, look, what's the point in participating in politics? We only get a government that finally attacks the workers. The workers have no uh, other solution but to struggle in the streets and not get themselves involved in politics. By 1933, November, there were new uh, elections. These were early elections. The old government uh, collapsed and the right wing won this uh, election. The right wing and center parties won a uh, majority. Now, the center party, so-called center party, was the radical party of La Rouge, who started as a left wing uh, populist and ended up as a right wing uh, populist. And he had the most uh, votes in the new uh, parliament and he formed the government. This government was extremely repressive against the workers. Uh, but then there was the uh, thorny question of the SEDA, the SEDA was the Spanish Confederation of Autonomous Right, and this was the main party of the, of the ruling class. And this party contained a strong fascist element within it. Um, and, and the intention of the ruling class was to establish a fascist regime in Spain already in 1933-34. If you look at the international situation, you had the coming to power of fascism in uh, Germany, and later on the coming to power of fascism in, uh, in Austria where the workers were defeated without a uh, fight, uh, practically, particularly in Germany. And so this had a very powerful impact on the Spanish uh, workers, a very radicalizing effect. And they, they said, and on their organizations, they said, we're not going to allow the same thing to happen here. If there's any hint of the fascists coming to power, we'll declare an insurrectionary general strike and we'll bring this government uh, down. Uh, the CEDA, Originally, didn't of Hill Robles, who was the main leader of the CEDA, uh, the CEDA originally did not participate in the government for fear of uh, provoking a workers' uh, backlash. But by 1934, they, feel, they felt confident uh, enough and they, uh, and, and they joined the government in uh, October. And this was the signal the workers' organizations had threatened and had warned that the minute the CEDA joined the government, they will declare a revolutionary uprising. The problem with this was that the workers um, trusted their leaders and trusted that their leaders had clear plans for this revolutionary uprising, which was not the case. Even the more radical of the leaders of the Socialist Party, like Largo Caballero, by this time he was making speeches basically saying that uh, bourgeois democracy is dead, doesn't serve the purposes of the Spanish Revolution, and we need a, a proletarian uh, dictatorship. This is the language that he used. Uh, uh, there were meetings, this is an int another interesting thing about the split within the Socialist Party, there were meetings in towns and cities where the Socialist Party was strong. In many cases, the representatives of the right wing were chased out of the town by armed workers. They didn't want to hear the leaders of the right wing of the Socialist uh, Party. They only wanted to hear the leaders of the left. And Largo Caballero went, went on a speaking tour, and th this was very interesting because you, you remember that this guy had been a uh, minister or advisor to the, on, on labor issues to the dictatorship in the 1920s, and now here he was. He was uh, considered the Spanish Lenin, talking very radical, and as he, as he delivered a very radical speech to an audience of workers, the workers will take it as a uh, given word, and uh, this will have a, a more radicalizing effect on the speaker and, uh, and vice versa. And by the end of this speaking tour, and these speeches were published in the daily paper of the Socialist uh, Party, he, he, the position that he was putting was very radical. The Socialist Youth 
was the organ uh, and the UGT, the Socialist Union, was uh, fully behind him. It was the most radical uh, section of the socialist movement. But the socialist youth became even more radical. I will explain this in a, in a bit. But uh, the socialist youth and the, the socialist party had uh, armed militias. They had uh, military training and they were preparing for, for a fascist uh, coup and, and how to fight uh, against it. But interestingly, they saw the struggle as mainly a technical military question. And this was a complete uh, mistake. In fact, in the three or four weeks before the SEDA joined the government, the socialist youth suspended all their meetings and all their public activity, all the agitation in the factories and in the neighborhoods, and they just uh, retreated into military training. They went into the woods, um, they trained on uh, firing ranges and stuff like that. And this was a complete mistake, because in reality the struggle against fascism is not militarily uh, in the main, it's a political struggle. Uh, the leaders of the UGT had organized some big strikes, for instance, the construction workers' strike in Madrid, the, the land laborers' strike in Andalusia and Extremadura, but they brought all these strikes to a halt in order to prepare for defeating the fascist uh, uprising that was coming. When in reality the situation should have been the opposite, uh, to agitate and to increase the activity of the working class as a whole, not small advanced uh, detachments with uh, guns, but uh, to weld the whole of the working class into the movement against uh, fascism. This was the only way to defeat fascism. So, when the uprising uh, came, oh sorry, there was also the formation of the workers' uh, alliances, more or less at this uh, time. And there was a strong unity uh, feeling in the Spanish workers, uh, and, they, and the, these uh, workers' alliances were formed, in some cases, at the initiative of the communist uh, left uh, around uh, Nin. At the beginning, these workers' alliances were, they had a weakness, which is that they were mainly local agreements between the leaders of the different organizations. But the strong point was that it involved most of the working class organizations, the Socialist Party, the Socialist Union. In many cases, it also involved the CNT, uh, and the communist uh, left. So the main workers' organizations were at least coordinating their efforts at the local uh, level. Uh, in Asturias, uh, the CNT had joined the workers' uh, alliance, which was not the case nationally, because there was a strong anti-political uh, uh, feeling amongst the CNT workers. But Asturias was the place where the insurrection was best uh, prepared. Come uh, October 1934, the SEDA joins the government, and there is an uprising, which is um, stronger in Madrid, in Catalonia, and in Asturias. In Catalonia, it was quickly defeated because the workers' organizations left the leadership to the left uh, Catalan Republicans, and they basically betrayed the struggle after two or three days. They just gave up, they refused to arm the workers, and uh, that's it. In uh, Madrid, the struggle was defeated also earlier on, but in Asturias, the struggle lasted for ten days. Uh, for 10 days, the workers controlled this uh, mining uh, region. The workers had no weapons, but they had dynamite. They improvised uh, tanks. Uh, and they basically resisted for 10 days. And for 10 days, there was a regime of uh, what they called uh, communism. Other workers, they called it uh, libertarian communism. Uh, money was abolished. It was replaced by coupons issued by the committees, the workers' committees. And uh, there is a very interesting... Uh, Sin that happened in these towns, in the mining towns of Pola de Langreo, Mieres, Llanes, and, and the mining uh, villages. And what happened was that uh, the leaders of the committees, i.e., the leaders of the organizations, fled the struggle after two or three days. The workers, uh, in arms, they uh, chased them, they arrested them, they brought them back to the committee rooms, which are now in, in the town halls, and uh, set an armed guard so that they wouldn't flee the struggle uh, again. And this, in, uh, in essence, shows you the tragedy of the Spanish uh, Revolution, that the workers were prepared to go until the end, sacrifice their lives for the victory of the revolution, but the leaders were fleeing at the, er at the earliest uh, possibility. Finally, the movement was defeated, and it's inter interesting to note 
that in the defeat of the movement, the role of the CNT Railway Workers Union uh, was important. The CNT Railway Workers Union was dominated by the abstentionist uh, faction, and they basically refused to participate in the general strike to the point that uh, they allowed the railways to be used to transport the troops with which the, re the Republican uh, government, the right-wing Republican government, uh, was to crush the Asturian uh, uprising. And these troops were led by none other than General uh, Franco, who was the, the head of the, Mo of the Moorish uh, detachments of the, of the Spanish troops in, in uh, Morocco. And they were particularly brutal. About 3,000 workers were killed, most of them after surrendering. Uh, 10,000 people were jailed, workers, uh, activists were jailed throughout the country. And um, this period between 33 and 35 is called the two black years, the Bienio Negro. It's also interesting to note this because we consider the Spanish Revolution having lasted between 1931 and 1937. But within that revolution, there were two periods of, of there was two years, one period of black reaction in which the workers' organizations were suppressed, the leaders were jailed and killed, uh, the papers were closed down, and so on. So you see that uh, revolution is not a straightforward uh, march. It has also advances, uh, uh, setbacks, and, and so on. But the most interesting thing about the October uprising is two. One, that it prevented the, forma the, the coming to power of fascism in Spain at that time. They couldn't establish a fascist uh, regime. And second, that it provoked a massive uh, further radicalization of the socialist uh, organizations, particularly the socialist uh, youth. The socialist youth came out with a pamphlet written by one uh, Santiago Carrillo, who later on played a, a treacherous role in the Spanish Revolution in the 1970s. But he was at that time the leader of the socialist youth. <coughs> Sorry. And in jail he wrote a pamphlet, a pamphlet it's not, not available in English, but it's called October, a new, um, a new stage. And basically it says, he, he analyzes the reasons of, for the defeat of the, of the <coughs> revolution, which he puts down to the treacherous role played by the leaders of all the different factions. He basically says that uh, in the international arena, the second international has betrayed and is dead. The third international has become Stalinized and bureaucratized and therefore is not an instrument for revolution and that the fourth international should be set up on the basis of working class independence, the dictatorship of the proletariat and strong Marxist revolutionary ideas. Basically, the situation was open uh, and the radicalization had been provoked by uh, events. Trotsky, at that uh, point, uh, th this was a phenomenon that was not only happening in Spain. Radicalization uh, of the social democracy, particularly of the youth of the social democracy, was also happening in other countries, like in France and in other countries, uh, faced with the danger of, uh, of fascism. Trotsky advocated, advised uh, his followers in uh, Spain to enter the socialist uh, youth. As a matter of fact, the socialist youth general secretary, Santiago Carrillo, wrote a letter to uh, Nin, asking uh, Nin to join the socialist youth. And there is an exchange of letters between Carrillo and uh, Nin. Uh, the Spanish uh, <coughs> Trotskys refused Trotsky's uh, advice to join uh, the, the socialist youth on the grounds that the socialist party was a reformist organization that couldn't be uh, transformed and that the Spanish Marxists needed to have a clean and separate uh, banner and that the slogan of the day was Marxist unification. And they went on to form a new party called the Party, the Workers' Party of Marxist Unification, the POM. Uh, in the correspondence between Nin and, and uh, Carrillo, it's very interesting because Carrillo is basically putting forward Trotsky's arguments for entrism, while uh, Nin is replying with sectarian uh, arguments. Carrillo says to Nin, look, even if what you say is true, i.e., that the socialist, because the, the, the invitation was for the Spanish Trotskyists to join the socialist youth as they were the more far-sighted far theoreticians of the Spanish Revolution, to help them arm uh, themselves theoretically and wage a struggle for the Bolshevization of the socialist organizations. This was the, the appeal in their, in their own words. 
Nin said this is not possible. And Carrillo replied, look, even if this, let's assume that this is not possible. What do you have to lose? You join with us and uh, we try. If we fail, then we will form a separate party of Marxist uh, unification, but you will bring with you the ranks of the socialist youth, which at that time had tens of thousands of members and 10,000 members in arms. Uh, and Nin refused. At this point, Trotsky broke relations with uh, Nin. He considered this to be a sectarian mistake of the first uh, order and a betrayal of the Spanish Revolution. And, and all links were, were broken. Nin went on to form the poll together with Maurin, who was the leader of the Catalan, as I explained before, the Catalan Workers and Peasants Bloc, which was a right Buharinist uh, uh, organization. And, uh, and that was it. And very shortly afterwards, the socialist youth was absorbed by the Stalinists. Uh, the Stalinists invited Carrillo to go to, and other leaders of the socialist youth to go to Moscow. By this time, 1935, uh, the Stalinists changed tack, and instead of a policy of uh, ultra leftism, of saying the socialist party is the same as the fascist, they now said we need a broad democratic front, a popular front of all the progressive forces against fascism, including the bourgeois, progressive bourgeois, and so on. And they invited the leaders of the socialist youth to uh, Moscow. Obviously, the, the Soviet Union exercised a powerful uh, influence and impact on these young uh, militants. And finally, there was a fusion between the socialist youth, the socialist youth and the communist uh, youth, which uh, gave rise to a new organization called the United Socialist uh, Youth. And this gave the Stalinists for the first time, a mass base in Spain, which they had not uh, had uh, before. And they went on to use this, this mass base to betray the Spanish uh, Revolution. By 1936, February, there were new elections and the Popular Front won. Just to give you an idea, uh, there were two coalitions standing in these elections. The Popular Front, on the one hand, which was composed of the Republican left, the Socialist Party, the Communist Party, the Syndicalist Party, which was a party set up by one of the leaders of the CNT in order to participate in elections. Very funny thing to do for, a, for an anarchist. But at this time, there was a very strong uh, anti-abstentionist uh, feeling amongst the uh, CNT masses, and most of them voted for the Popular Front. Uh, and the poem, this is interesting, because the poem joined the Popular Front. Uh, the, the, despite the fact that they were a party, they were formally opposed to the idea of a popular front with uh, progressive elements of the bourgeois. Uh, they, they signed the agreement of the popular front, they participated in the electoral uh, coalition. Uh, the, other, the other bloc that stood in the elections was called the counter-revolutionary front. So the situation was quite clear for everyone. Uh, the workers wanted revolution, the ruling class wanted a fascist uh, coup. Bourgeois democracy had been completely exposed uh, as not serving the interests of any class. The workers had not gotten anything about, uh, of the first Republican government, uh, and the ruling class realized that by democratic means they couldn't smash the workers and keep them under control. So the period between February and July, everyone knew that the uh, fascist coup was being prepared. Everyone knew and everyone prepared, apart from the workers' leaders. The workers' leaders continued with the policy of asking the government to purge the army of the fascist elements, uh, of uh, calling on the workers for restraint of, uh, particularly the leaders of the Communist uh, Party were the most ardent advocates of this uh, policy, stopping uh, strikes, uh, advocating against strikes, uh, the, the, while the masses of the UGT and the CNT were, were moving forward and there were big strikes on, on a number of, uh, in, in a number of different sectors of the economy and, and cities and so on, regional general strikes and so on. Uh, the Republican uh, left had become an empty shell because most of the, the serious bourgeois had sided with the open counter-revolution. They had decided that they needed a fascist coup. So really... The Socialist Party and uh, the Communist Party were moderating the program of socialist revolution. They were, they were not advocating social revolution. They were not even, even advocating proper ag agrarian reform, separation of the church and the state. They were not even advocating the democratic revolution on the basis of not scaring away the Republican left, which was uh, an organization that represented no one, represented no serious political uh, force. Trotsky described it as 
uh, the shadow of the of the bourgeois. They, they didn't represent the bourgeois because the bourgeois were all on the counter-revolutionary side camp. They, they represented the shadow of the of the bourgeois. And if you read, and it's in Felix Morrow's uh, book, if you read the program of the Popular Front, that stood in, in February '36, is really ironic because it says. Uh, the Republican uh, delegation, there were talks between the Socialists and the Republicans. Uh, the Republican delegation uh, rejects the demand for agrarian reform, and this is then put in the program. The Republican uh, delegation re rejects the Socialist Party proposal for this and that and the other. Basically, it was the program of the Republican left, while it was the Socialist Party that was providing most of the votes and the militants and, and the forces for this coalition. And this is the essence of the, of the counter-revolutionary role of the, of the Popular Front. By, by, uh, July, 19, uh, by July, 17, July 17th, uh, the fascist uprising started, but only in uh, Morocco, led by uh, Franco. By July 18th, the fascist uprising started all over Spain. And uh, in the first hours and in the first day of the uprising, the Republican government was trying to deny there had been an uprising. Uh, they established uh, talks with the uh, fascists uh, who had uh, organized the coup, and they attempted to establish a government of peace, trying to reach a deal with the fascists. But the workers were out in the streets demanding arms, which the government refused to give them. Uh, and in a number of towns and cities, particularly in Barcelona and in Catalonia, the workers rose up, uh, got whatever weapons they could get, uh, kitchen uh, knives, uh, the assaulted uh, rifle uh, shops, they managed to get some from the local police, and they basically established barricades everywhere. This is in uh, Barcelona. Uh, as you can see, right at the, at the end of the street, there's the Columbus uh, statue. If you've been in Barcelona, you know where, where that is. And, uh, and they established barricades everywhere. They surrounded, they surrounded the military barracks and they basically defeated the coup in Barcelona uh, on the basis of uh, revolutionary policy. This was not won on the basis of the relative strength of the weaponry of each side. This was won on political uh, lines. The workers will jump through the barricades and approach the soldiers and ask them what they were fighting for and uh, told them that they were fighting for a fascist coup uh, and that uh, the workers were fighting for a revolution. And, and many soldiers just basically gave up their weapons and uh, joined uh, the uprising. By July, <coughs> by July 19th, there was no uh, bourgeois state force remaining in Catalonia. The workers had taken uh, power. Uh, the army had uh, disbanded. The police had disbanded, the assault guards had disbanded, all the police forces uh, no longer existed, and the only power in Catalonia was the power of uh, armed workers, because they given themselves uh, weapons, uh, organized in committees. Uh, and this was carried out mainly by the, by the workers from the CNT and also with a strong participation of the, of the PUM. Many, many people died in those uh, days, including some known leaders of the communist, the Iberian communist youth, the youth of the PUM, and, uh, and leaders of the CNT, and, and so on. Uh, and the workers had power in Catalonia, and they established committees everywhere. There were defense committees in the neighborhoods, there were workers' control committees in the factories. Uh, the workers, for instance, controlled the border in, uh, with France, the Catalonia with uh, France, uh, and they set up uh, they after what, is, what was known as the Central Committee of Anti-Fascist uh, Militias. Uh, and this Central Committee of Anti-Fascist Militias was a very peculiar body because it Im included representatives of the main workers' organizations, but also included re representatives of the left Republican, the Catalan left Republicans. But the balance of power was clear. The power was in the hands of the CNT workers and, and the local rank and file committees. And what happened next? What happened next uh, shows the bankruptcy of uh, anarchist ideology when actually put to the test. Because they, they went, Central Committee Anti-Fascist anti Militias, they went for a meeting with Companys, who was the leader of the Republican left in Catalonia, and who was the president of the Catalan government. And uh, the president of the Catalan government told them, 
gentleman uh, I have served you in the past. He had been a lawyer for the, for the CNT in uh, the 1910s. I have served you loyally in the past. Uh, you have now power uh, in Catalonia and I will be a loyal servant if your power, of your power if you, if you so uh, ask me. And uh, the leaders of the CNT said, no, 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 we're anarchists. We don't want power and uh, we're just interested in winning this uh, war and uh, defeating the fascists, but you can remain in your position. At the beginning, this, this was, uh, the relationship was very strongly skewed in favor of the, of the workers' organizations and the workers' militias. But leaving the Generalitat, the regional government, in place, leaving the Generalitat in place meant that uh, progressively, in the months that go from July until uh, May, 37, the Generalitat uh, slowly re-established its uh, power, re-established its police, re -established, uh, and the same in Madrid happened, uh, re-established the uh, popular army as opposed to the militias, and they progressively rolled back the power of the workers' uh, committees with the support and acquiescence of the workers' leaders. We're part of these uh, bodies. Uh, a coalition government was formed in Barcelona, which included the POM. So this was the most radical uh, party advocating workers' power, dictatorship of the proletariat, and then they entered into a government whose first uh, action in, um, in September already was to disband the Central uh, Committee of Anti-Fascist uh, Militias. And then in October, it disbanded all the committees, although they never were actually disbanded, but they issued a decree disbanding the committees and uh, banning individuals from uh, carrying weapons, i.e. banning the workers' organizations from having a workers' uh, militia and, uh, and establishing the, the, the um, how you call it, the, the monopoly of uh, force on the, on the hands of the police uh, and, the, and the official uh, army. And this, and this process lasted for all these months, from July until uh, May, and uh, the workers resisted the workers uh, attempted to uh, fight back. Uh, in the first uh, weeks, this was a revolutionary war that was being fought. Durruti, who was a man of action, as I said before, immediately set up a workers' uh, militia, 40,000 armed uh, workers, men and women. They uh, went into the front and they rolled back the fascists from uh, Aragon. And uh, they did so through revolutionary means. Uh, I recommend you to watch the London Freedom film by Ken Loach, where this is very clearly expressed. Uh, the workers' militia will enter one village, or peasant village in, uh, in Aragon. They will immediately, immediately set up a committee, distribute the land amongst the, the peasants, and burn down the local uh, church, uh, or occupy it for other purposes. And they, uh, therefore, they created a, a bastion of the revolution. Those towns and villages were the last ones to be taken by the fascists in uh, 1939. And, uh, and they established in Aragon, basically, a workers' government, which was called uh, the Aragon Defense uh, Junta, which was run mainly by the CNT, but also by the Pol. Uh, and this was the last last uh, part of Spain that was taken over by the, by the fascists. And there was this debate. Uh, the, the Stalinists, the Republicans, and uh, some of the leaders of the Socialist Party, they argued, first, we must win the war, so that then we can make the revolution. Uh, but in fact, this is completely mistaken, because a civil war cannot be won by military means, and even less in Spain. Where, where Germany and Italy were supporting the fascist uh, camp, <coughs> supplying it with weapons, uh, artillery, uh, an air force, and so on, uh, while the democratic powers were uh, continuing with a farce of non-intervention. Uh, uh, it was impossible to win that uh, war on military uh, basis. It had to be won on revolutionary uh, policies. And the argument of Trotsky was that only the thorough expropriation of the bourgeoisie and giving the peasants the land, giving the workers the factories, can create the political conditions for them to win the civil war. And he was obviously basing himself on the experience of the civil war in Russia, where they had been in a much worse position 
isolated in maybe one or two big cities and they had nevertheless defeated 17 uh, armies of foreign uh, intervention and, and the local uh, whites. Uh, but this was not the policy that was followed by the leaders of the, of the Popular Front, by the leaders of the Socialist Party, or by the leaders of the CNT, because the leaders of the CNT, after having been advocating uh, not taking power, not participating in, policy, in politics and so on, they ended up joining the Popular Front government, the same government that was disarming the workers, uh, destroying the committees, and uh, so on. And they had two of what they were known as uh, Garcia Oliver and uh, Federica Monsen were known as the anarcho ministers and they played a dreadful role in covering up for, for all the crimes of the Popular Front. By January, February 1937, the situation was really bad in the Republican camp. Uh, as well as the advance of the fascist troops, you saw a situation where there was censorship of the press in the Republican camp. So that the CNT newspapers could not report the fact that, for instance, in Malaga, the Republican forces had arrested the main leaders of the, of the CNT uh, and they had put them in uh, jail. The CNT members were not aware because the CNT uh, papers were not allowed to report. They, they came out with blank uh, pages. And uh, the leaders of the CNT were part of this government and they were not doing anything. Maybe they were protesting behind the scenes, but they were not doing uh, any public uh, agitation. And this is the reason why the, why the war was uh, lost. In 1937 was the last uh, episode, sorry, this was supposed to come before. Uh, this is the workers' militias. And you can see that this, this is one where you can see the strong unity between the CNT and the Pope. And uh, there's even, uh, it says Trotsky in, in, the, in this uh, homemade tank, I guess. And it says Viva Trotsky. And it says also UHP, which is uh, the Union of Proletarian uh, Brothers, or the Brotherhood of Proletarian Unity, something like this. Uh, it was a slogan for the unity of workers and workers' uh, power in, uh, in Spain. Uh, the poem itself went from a small organization of a few thousand members to having 40 or 60,000 members in eight weeks. They had an armed militia of 10,000 uh, members. Uh, but, but also the poem betrayed the Spanish Revolution because they also joined the Republican government. Nin was a minister of justice in the Catalan uh, Republican government. At the same time that this Catalan Republican government was dissolving the committees, disarming the workers, disarming the militias, and establishing a bourgeois Republican uh, army. Uh, and as I said before, on this basis, the war could not be won. May 37 is the last episode of the Spanish Revolution. Uh, there was a Stalinist provocation in Barcelona. If you've been to Barcelona, there's the main uh, Catalonia square. And in one corner of this square, there's a big, very tall building. And that used to be the telephone uh, exchange. And the telephone exchange had been taken over by the workers at heavy cost of uh, life in uh, July 18th. And it was controlled by, the C <coughs> by a joint committee of CNT and UGT workers. And they had uh, an armed guard in the, in the building. And, the, and this was a reflection or, or graphical uh, example of dual power that existed. That is, that the regional government could not uh, use the phones without the permission of the workers, and the workers could listen in in, the, in the, any conversations that the government was having with, uh, with anyone. So the government decided that, the, that this was enough, and there was a Stalinist provocation. They went in and tried to take over the building by force. Uh, this was the official police. The workers resisted. Uh, word went out that this was happening. And the whole of Barcelona erupted in barricades again. The working class neighborhoods were taken over by the workers. The factories were occupied. Barricades were erected all, all, over, the, all over the city. And basically the workers were in power again. <coughs> again. Uh, but they were once again betrayed by the, by the leaders. The leaders of the CNT uh, advocated moderation. This, were, this happened on a Monday, Monday the 4th of, uh, 3rd of May. Uh, by Tuesday, the CNT leaders said, okay, the, the, the issue has now been sorted. Uh, we've talked to the regional government, and there's a pact of non-aggression, and everyone should give up their weapons and uh, dismantle the barricades, go back to work. The workers refused, and they stayed on the barricades for two, three, four more days. Federica Monseigne had to come all the way from Valencia, where now the Republican government was seated, uh, to advocate 
the, to speak on the radio to the workers in the barricades and demanding that they should leave the barricades. The workers still refuse to leave the, the barricades. Uh, the, in, in Tarragona, the workers had also taken uh, control of the situation and they warned the CNT leaders, the CNT national leaders, that uh, assault guards were being sent by the Republican government from Valencia to Barcelona to crush the workers' uh, rebellion. The CNT leaders refused to report this to the workers in Barcelona because they were trying to convince them that there had been a peace deal and that they should go back to, to work. But, uh, but, but particularly the, the worst role played in all this was by the poem. Because the poem was the party that had been advocating workers' uh, power, uh, dictatorship of the proletariat and all these things. Uh, what did they do on these crucial uh, days? On these crucial days, the CNT workers were looking towards the poll for leadership as they were getting none from their own uh, leaders. And the poll had a reverential uh, parliamentary approach to the whole thing. They said, no, look, I mean, we are a small organization. The main responsibility in this is the CNT leaders. If the CNT leaders don't give leadership, we can't give leadership. Uh, it's a completely crazy position. If they had given a clear lead in those days, they could have taken over uh, the leadership of that movement and taken power in uh, Barcelona, which will have had a big impact throughout, uh, throughout the Republican camp at that, uh, at that time. But they refused to do so. And uh, by Thursday, they were also advocating leaving the barricades on, on the argument that uh, a successful uprising was not possible. And the best way was to regroup with the forces uh, intact. And, uh, and there was some recruitment with the forces intact because immediately after the uh, workers abandoned the barricades, they, uh, the PUM was illegalized. The central, the executive committee of 40 members were all arrested. Uh, Nin was taken from Barcelona and uh, shot at the secret uh, Stalinist prison in uh, Madrid. The papers were closed. The party was uh, banned. And this was, uh, and this was the result of the, of the wrong policies of those uh, days. What's in here is a very interesting leaflet by, uh, by uh, an organization that was created in the late 1936 uh, within the anarchist movement. And these were a number of uh, anarchist uh, activists who uh, basically were reacting against the betrayal of their leaders. And they advocated uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat, that the workers should take power. So they basically broke with anarchist uh, conception. And uh, they, they uh, advocated the, the formation, as it says here, of a revolutionary junta, the, uh, the summary execution of all, of all those uh, uh, found guilty, the disarming of all armed forces, the socialization of the economy, the dissolution of political parties, uh, which have acted against the interest of the working class, uh, remain on the streets, revolution above all, and uh, he also says, uh, we, we greet our comrades from the PUM, which have uh, fought with us in the streets. Long live social revolution down with counter-revolution. This was the positions that were being advocated by the left wing of the CNT on those days. Unfortunately, the friends of the Ruti, as they call themselves, uh, arrived on the scene too late to uh, play an effective uh, role. But on those days... If there had been a joint uh, work on the, on the part of the, of the poem, li poem leaders, the friends of the Ruti, and the revolutionary elements within the CNT in Barcelona, they could have turned the situation uh, around. After 1937, the revolution was finished. And as the revolution was finished, the, the, the civil war was completely defeated. It took another two years until, uh, until mid-1939, but at that time it was just a purely military affair. And, and the state of affairs that existed in the Republican camp and the state of affairs that existed in the fascist camp from the point of view of the working class organizations was exactly the same. CNT was uh, later expelled from the government, the members were in jail, uh, the papers were closed down, uh, same as the, as the poem. So this farce of uh, bourgeois democracy or the democratic republic that uh, workers were supposed to be defending was nowhere to be seen. And uh, this led to massive demoralization and finally the defeat of the Spanish uh, Republic in, 19, uh, in 1939. 1939, when the fascist troops entered Barcelona, uh, most of the anti-fascist militants, the working class uh, militants from the PUM, the CNT, they were in jail. 
and the Republic handed them over with the jails uh, locked to the fascists. And uh, s similar things happened in, uh, in the Basque country where the left, uh, the, the, the Republican nationalists in the Basque country, the bourgeois nationalists, they basically reached a deal with Franco so the factories will be taken over intact and they prevented the workers who wanted to blow them up so they couldn't be used by the war effort of the fascists from doing uh, so and so on and, and so on. It was, it was a bloody defeat of the Spanish uh, uh, revolution which led to 40 years of uh, Franco dictatorship, uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, forced into exile, tens of thousands killed uh, many of whom in uh, shallow uh, graves and common graves that have not been found up until this day. And uh, none of this has been, uh, has been uh, settled. None of these scores have been settled in, uh, in Spain. And they remain very much uh, alive in the historical memory of the people. They are now coming back to the, to the fore. Yes. Yes, I mean, the subject of the, of the Spanish uh, Revolution in the 1930s is so vast that you can't cover it all, even in, in one uh, lead-off. And there's many, many things that I, I didn't uh, mention, and some have been brought up by, by different uh, comrades. Rob uh, spoke, for instance, of the question of Stalin, the role of Stalinism, which I only mentioned in, in passing. And you can see it clearly, I mean, uh, the policies of, uh, of uh, the Soviet Union, Stalinist Soviet Union in, in the Spanish Revolution, even went through different uh, phases. First of all, they uh, were late in supporting the, the revolution. Any military aid of the Soviet Union arrived uh, at least one month or month and a half after the start of the, of the battle. Uh, at, the, at the beginning there was no real help. Secondly, when help arrived, it was uh, with strings attached. Strings attached means that through the conduit of the military help, which was the only country providing any sort of military help to the Republic, uh, the Stalinists uh, basically determined all the policies of the Republican government. There was, for instance, an incident in which the poem was asked to join the national government, uh, the National Republic, the National Popular Front uh, government, which they were not part of, and uh, they were discussing this. And uh, the, the Soviet ambassador said, if they uh, enter, there's not going to be any more help. I mean, that was quite clear. Then they also used the international brigades. The international brigades were obviously very... Uh, courageous and uh, dedicated young uh, working people from many different countries went to fight fascism in Spain. So they were mostly uh, organized around these international brigades created by the Stalinists and the international brigades were also used for political uh, purposes, i.e. to uh, show the strength of the Soviet Union and impose the political uh, domination over all aspects of the Spanish uh, uh, Revolution. For instance, the Stalinists were pushing for Largo Caballero to be removed from Prime Minister, and he was eventually removed, replaced by uh, Negrin. Uh, they had a whole network of uh, secret prisons in uh, Spain. Uh, the GPU was very active. It's interesting also that many of the Soviet, uh, many of the Stalinists who went and were active in the Spanish Revolution, as soon as they were recalled back, to Russia, they were shot in the trials. People like Antonov, Ovsenko, Orlov, Krivitsky, and other people like that. Uh, some were shot, some defected. Uh, <coughs> Stalin was clearly very worried that anyone who had been in Spain, i.e. living side by side with the real revolution taking place, could have been infected and, and bring this uh, virus back, uh, back home. But uh, the whole policy was determined by the interest of smashing the revolution, but the reason for smashing the revolution was twofold. One, that Rob explained, that Stalin was worried that, uh, that the, the revolution in Spain was producing a revolutionary renewal amongst the workers in uh, Russia, and that this could threaten the bureaucracy. But there was another reason, and that is that at that time the foreign policy of the Soviet Union, of Stalin, was one of reaching a deal with the democratic powers, England and uh, France. 
And obviously the democratic powers will not have been very uh, the democratic, uh, the bourgeois of uh, France and, uh, and uh, Britain will not have been very happy with the revolution in Spain. And this is the main reason why the Republic never uh, conceded autonomy or independence for Morocco, which, ha who, as, as Alan explained, will have uh, dealt a severe blow to the Franco forces. And the reason was this, because uh, obviously the other colonial power in Morocco was France. And France, uh, and immediately if there had been any sort of autonomy or independence for Spanish Morocco, the, the French Morocco will have uh, risen up as, as well. And the Democratic Republic, ruled by the Popular Front in uh, France, will have not been very happy with, uh, with that. But by the end of the war, in 1938, uh, even Stalin realized that his alliance with the Democratic powers was not going to work out. The democratic powers were not really interested in stopping uh, fascism, and his whole policy shifted towards reaching a deal with Germany. And in order to, deal with, to reach a deal with Germany, he had to put an end to the Spanish uh, Civil War. So by 1938, the whole thrust of the, of the Stalinist policy in Spain was to finish the war. Uh, and there were a whole number of incidents in which Communist Party supported people, uh, tried to establish a new junta to reach a, a deal with Franco and end the war on Franco's uh, terms. It was a really treacherous uh, set of movements at that uh, time. The international brigades were withdrawn in January uh, 38, I think it was, and, and the whole uh, situation came to, came to an end on those, uh, on those bases. That is, that uh, the policy, as Trotsky explained, the policy of socialism in one country and the defense of the Soviet Union as, as the one country, uh, the, the foreign policy of the Soviet Union took precedence over the, foreign, uh, over the genuine interest of world uh, uh, revolution, as we can see clearly. There's also the question of uh, the Spanish so-called transition to, to democracy. He, in it, the, the Stalinist the Communist Party, led by Carrillo, who had been the leader of the Socialist Youth in the 1930s and became a Stalinist, they was completely treacherous because it was based on, uh, I mean, it, first of all, the regime was, to, was about to fall because of the revolutionary movement of the masses. There were regional general strikes, all-out general strikes and so on. There was a ferment, a revolutionary ferment. The workers in the millions were joining trade unions and left-wing political parties. And the regime was about to collapse. And in basically what uh, democratic so-called democratic transition consisted of is an agreement between uh, the regime, the remains of the regime, and the workers' uh, leaders, so that, they, uh, so that there will be a transition to a bourgeois democracy in which uh, the, the main pillars of the old regime will not be touched. This was based on impunity for the crimes of the dictatorship, which still remains to this day. There are people who were torturers and uh, ministers in the Franco dictatorship who then became democratic politicians, leading democratic politicians, uh, and so on. They're still, they're still active today, some of them, although they're, they're dying, dying out, obviously. But uh, the, the role of uh, the monarchy, the monarchy in Spain had been overthrown by the Republic in 1931 and only restored by the Franco dictatorship. So the king we have now in Spain or rather he, he is the son of the king who was put in by Franco, who saw, took an oath of loyalty to the principles of the Franco uh, movement. Uh, the role of the church, which was uh, maintained, the church which uh, uh, blessed the, the Franco uprising and sided with the Franco uh, troops in, in, the, in the civil war, uh, maintain a privileged position in, in bourgeois democracy, for instance. There is state funding for Catholic uh, schools. There's uh, Catholic priests teaching religion in, in the state uh, education system. The church is funded to this day by the state and so on. This is no real separation. Uh, the question of the flag that uh, Ben uh, mentioned, the Spanish flag that we have now, is the flag of the Franco dictatorship. The, 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 flag, the flag that the workers' organizations uh, had adopted was the Republican flag of the 1930s. And all these betrayals, uh, the betrayal of the right of self-determination for, for the oppressed nationalities and, and so on, uh, produced this uh, so-called uh, democratic transition, which was basically the betrayal of the, Sp the second Spanish uh, revolution. 
and this is now being put into question. The people who are becoming active in politics now. The main idea is that we must do away with the 1978 uh, regime, 1978 being the year in which the new constitution was, was passed. And this is what is being uh, questioned today. On the question, uh, and, and, and as Alan says, this is a life issue today. For instance, not so long ago, one year ago, I think 2014, there was uh, uh, a big gathering in Tarragona in which the church paid homage to the beatification, I think, is that, is that how you call it? The becoming, uh, is the first step towards becoming a saint. Uh, so the beatification of the martyrs of uh, the church under the republic. I, Franco supporting uh, priests who were killed or, or died in different circumstances, they were being uh, paid uh, homage and uh, made into saints, or, or they will be made into saints. And uh, the ceremony was presided, thousands of people there, ceremony was presided by the Minister of Interior of the Spanish uh, government, the Minister of uh, Justice, uh, the President of the Spanish Parliament, and the President of the Catalan uh, government, who's supposed to be so anti-Spanish and pro-independence, he was also there because basically defends the same kind of uh, interest. And this is something that is still... Uh, 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 an issue in uh, in Spain. There's been a question about the Catalan uh, independence uh, movement, and this is the subject of another uh, discussion. We could, could talk a lot about that. But basically, you, you you have a situation which is not dissimilar to what Trotsky described in the 1930s. On the one hand, uh, the leaders of this movement, i.e., the Catalan president Artur Mas is uh, cynically using the, the nationalist uh, sentiment of the Catalan people for his own political purposes. He is a, he is a Catalan <coughs> president who's made a deal with the Spanish government to implement policy of repression against the social <coughs> movements, uh, privatization, cuts, austerity, and everything. There is no fundamental political difference between the two of them. Only one defends the Spanish uh, flag, the other one defends the defense, in inverted commas, the, the Catalan flag. But at the same time, there is, there is behind this, there is a genuine feeling of national uh, oppression, there's a genuine feeling of people in Catalonia, they don't want to be part of this reactionary uh, regime that exists in uh, Spain. And in fact, the pro-independence movement has two separate wings, the more bourgeois, respectable wing around uh, Artur Mas, and then there's another organization, the, the COOP, the Popular Unity Candidature, which is uh, basically saying that uh, they want independence in order to break with the regime, in order to create a Catalan Republic, and they declare themselves anti-capitalist, uh, anti-austerity, and, and so on. So obviously there are two wings to this uh, movement. The position of Marxists is to defend the right of uh, self-determination up to and including separation if the Catalan uh, people so wish. And this would be uh, a major break in the whole of the 1978 uh, regime because the unity of Spain guaranteed by the armed forces, which is something that comes from the Franco regime, is also part of the betrayals of the, of the Spanish Revolution in the 1970s. My last point is, is this. There's a, there's a bibliography here. Uh, I would recommend the Congress to read uh, all, all of these books, not necessarily in this uh, order. But there is another short pamphlet which I think summarizes the whole of the Spanish uh, Revolution that was written by Trotsky. And uh, it contains many <coughs> lessons for today. And it's called The Class, the Party and the Leadership. And he wrote it in, I think, in 1939 uh, in response to a French uh, group, sect, uh, that said, that argued that the Spanish workers had been defeated because their level of consciousness was not high enough uh, to create a leadership that would have uh, brought them to uh, victory. And Trotsky basically says this is the opposite of the truth. At every single juncture of the Spanish Revolution, the workers uh, went in a direction that was almost uh, every single time opposite to the direction of the leadership. Uh, as we've seen in the Asturias Commune, the anarchists uh, creating uh, workers' militias uh, and so on, the leaders of the socialist youth moving to revolutionary Marxist conclusions. At uh, every single stage, uh, the workers uh, attempted to uh, break the, 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 the treacherous policies of the leaders. 
And Trotsky draws the main conclusion is that uh, in the course of a revolution, it is extremely difficult for the workers to improvise a new uh, leadership. And that the difference between Spain and Russia is precisely, Russia 17, is precisely that, that in uh, Russia there was a leadership that had been prepared, not in the heat of events, but beforehand, over, over decades of patient work in the factories, in the working class, uh, developing the theory and so on, and having gained certain footholds in the, in the movement, so that when events broke out uh, in, uh, in uh, Russia, they could, in a short space of time, take over the majority of the, of the working class. And this is basically, and lead it to uh, victory, this is basically what we are engaged in uh, now, assembling the first cadres, uh, arming ourselves theoretically, turning towards the workers' uh, movement, preparing for when revolutionary events inevitably will break out in this country and, and others so that we can intervene in a decisive uh, manner and lead the working class to, uh, to victory, which is the best homage we, we, have, we can pay to the previous generations who paid for, with, their, with their lives for the betrayal of the, of the leadership, of the, in, the, in this case, of the Spanish uh, revolution.